I met Abby 20 years ago, and when I did the initial Meet the Parents weekend, Abby's dad said, I know, let's take Tom to Hailcat. It's this slightly unusual um, falling apart nursery. Fast forward six or seven years, we'd had an annual trip here during the summer. Going fast forward a little bit further on, my father-in-law spotted Hailcat Nursery, lease available. He phoned us up and we'd only been here a few months before and had driven away saying, it's so far gone now. You kind of, you know, you'd be an idiot to take it on kind of thing. And then he told us this and we leapt to the phone. <laughs> You know, the sort of thing that you know that we grow are the sort of the herbaceous perennials and um, of and we do sort of alpines through to you know three meter high rebeccias uh, can i ask if you do mail order we dabble yeah. uh, we dabble we don't we don't have a sort of a full-blown setup yet we've been saying for the past five years we must sort <laughs> we need to do something but the Again, because we're such a small setup, it's recognizing what we can do yeah. well. And I think if we are if we were to embark on mail order, you've got to do a really good job at it. I think you have got to do a good job at it. But I think that I remember talking to the late Mike Loftus at w Woodens of Weniston. Oh yeah, yeah. Nurse, nursery and stuff that you probably heard of. Yeah. I said and he 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 was sort of talking about doing mail order, you know, and the prospect of, of working it out and everything else. And I went over and we were having a conversation one day and I said to him, how's the mail order business going? And he said, well, put it this way. If it wasn't for mail order, I wouldn't still be here. Yeah, yeah. Because it made that much difference to his business. Yeah, I, th I think for some, that's exactly right. And um, Kath and Terry, a lovely couple, have Edrum Nurseries up in the, yeah. um, the northeast. Um, when they took over the nursery there, 5 10% of the business was mail order. And now for them, it's 95% of the business. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mail order. So... I mean, our situation has changed in the last two years because we've got another site. We've got this other sort of outlet yeah. in, in town. And to be honest, we can just about keep on top of it as it is. So the idea of have, having an added layer is not something you dismiss, but you just have to factor in. You have to wait until you're ready. You have, yeah. And obviously have a good, you know, good website to back it up. And mm. um, But I think we'd certainly not rule it out. Um, mm. So when you say you dabble, does that mean if someone like Alan phones you up and says, have you got X, Y and Z, you'll sort of shuffle them out the door uh, and send them in the post? Me extra money, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think, you know, if, if someone if, if someone particularly early, early on in the year gets in touch and says, you know, on the back of a conversation we had in the summer, um, I'd like, you know, could you send me such and such? It's so much easier, obviously, when the plants are in a dormant state. To get them into it you know it's amazing what you can fit into a, a really quite small um box the difficulty comes when you know the plants get growing and then they don't you've got to you know you'll know yourselves having received really well packaged plants yeah. it's a bit of an art yeah. form isn't it to, yeah. get them to, yeah. to survive to survive the journey well, I, I remember these uh, and i ordered some ranunculus and rob and rosie hardy um, and she sent them when they were in flower because I, I didn't hear about them until they were in flower. But yeah. the boxes were enormous because the pots were a two litre pot, but the plant was a metre tall. Mm. So, you know, you've got this enormous box all full of air and these waving plants and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they were packed beautifully. They did arrive unscathed. But I mean, it, it must be a, tr tr a tremendous exercise on behalf of the packers to actually get that prepared. But I agree yeah. with you. I mean, it's not so bad doing it when they're dormant. Yeah. Yeah. And, I'll, you know, I've had friends... Um, you know, confused friends from school who, for the first time, are presented with a garden. They don't have a clue what to do, and they say, "Help!" <laughs> and I sort of send. I've sent a couple of survival pack plant <laughs> collections out to them of things that you'd have to really, really try to kill. Or I say to them, "Look, just get them in the ground, out of the pots." Um, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and um and then and then in you know subsequent years you can dig these up and split them and divide them um so i've done a bit of that but uh but but yeah it's not it's not a big thing i love the idea of a survival pack and then uh, this goes back yeah. to when we were talking about pottage about things you don't remember that non-gardeners they just won't yeah. know take it out of the pot yeah yeah <laughs> water it yeah, yeah absolutely um and I think I think that's something I'm always, you know, guilty of is um, is not making assumptions all the time about what people perhaps don't know. 
Um, and actually, I really like it when people come up to us here because we've both experienced this, not so much recently, but certainly, you know, 10, 15 years ago, if we ever went to a nursery and you quite often, um, the, 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 you know, the sort of the, the, the greeting you get is not perhaps overly warm or people say, can I help you or what do you want? You know, kind of thing. Um, I'd never name names, but, you know, we have experienced that. <laughs> but actually, I really want people to come and actually feel that they can ask questions and don't feel intimidated. Um, and, and we, you know, we'll often get, I'll get someone come over and say, I'm really sorry, this is really embarrassing, but can you explain to me what a perennial is? You know, how, how, how is that different to a whatever, you know, something that I've bought every year from the supermarket and planted? So I really like that because that tells me that, People obviously don't don't feel intimidated. Um, well, there's no question that's too silly, I think. And the other no. great thing, of course, is that you're casting your bread upon the waters because that person will say, I tell you what, we'll go to so and so. We'll see Tom because he was a nice bloke and he explained what the that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. also you're helping to feed that love and, and spread the knowledge. And hopefully the more people understand and the braver they get at trying different plants. And then yeah. it, it yeah. is, that, it's a slippery slope, as we all know, with plants, you know, you yeah, start is, to get is. in yeah. and then before you know it, you're obsessed. And so many people say to me, you know, I, it's no good because I kill everything, you know, everything I get. I say, and then quite often I'll say to them, that's not the case at all, because a lot of the plants that you're presented with, perhaps outside the supermarket that you purchase are just a they're not suited. You know, they're just not suited to this part of the world mm. or they've spent the entire life in a greenhouse and you take them home and they go into shock. So, you, you know, you're not you're not actively going out your way to kill these things. Just, uh, you know, I just wouldn't touch them with a barge pole. You'd be better off with, you know, this kind of again, it takes you back to that sort of beginner's range, not in any kind of. Um, patronizing way but these are really good bread and butter plants mm. that are you know a great way to get started it doesn't matter if you know the kids play football and it knocks it over or the you know it gets trampled because it's got the oomph to to bounce back yeah yeah you were brandishing a plant a moment ago and then we I got was, yeah. distracted <laughs> as yeah, often I'm happens on this podcast yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's, it's just this is a typical example of the sort of thing we do. So this is a Veronica, Veronica gentioides. Uh, this is dark, a dark form of it. And we produce, I'd say, about 70% of our plants from seed. And that, uh, I mean, the, the last two years have been challenging in the point of view. It's really thrown the normal cycle out the window because during lockdown, we weren't able to do the normal seed sowing that we would do. And we were way behind on the potting up of the plug plants because we produce, um, I wish I could pick the laptop up and take you into the polytunnels, but um, you know, we put it, we, we, our seedlings are grown in cell trays and then the cell trays are um, develop into plug plants and then we pot them up. So that's typically how this plant was produced. Um, and that's, really how we how most of the plants are, are grown here so um uh, we we, te we tend to focus i mean it sounds an obvious thing to say but focus on plants that are good for the area um and particularly those will, that will tolerate our big thing around here is the winter wet because it is you know it can be really really quite wet and some plants obviously don't like that very much um and uh, but also uh, my my big thing is uh, perennials with good longevity that last well and and don't curl up their toes after a few years i mean it's great to dabble in in the in the in those which go for it and it's a big firework display for a couple of years um but i do like the ones which are a, a good constant obviously you've got to to turn out things that you know are good sellers and that you know you can yeah, grow well yeah. but how often are you kind of adding things in and, and trying different plants and broadening the range or oh. whatever all the time. Yeah. All, yeah. I thought you I mean, would it's, be. It's, it's, um, I mean, we, we, guess, uh, we get all our seed from Gelato, uh, yeah. an amazing, amazing source of, of plant seed. And uh, every other year when the catalogue's produced, you know, Abby's there at the table and says, oh, they've got a new, a new variety of such and such. And I say, yeah, sweetheart, do we really need... <laughs> 19 different cultivars of that particular Veron Veronica we've just been looking at um, because because you can but I'm, I'm conscious that you can I, and I'd, I think we do do this sometimes you overface people with too much to choose from 
Um, but it's hard, you know, it's hard when, when, when you immerse yourself in this world and you hear about something that's, you know, new or, um, I mean, we do that with the seed catalogs, but we also get plug plants from people who grow them. And perhaps those plants have plant breeders rights. So we have to get them from them. Um, and it gets really hard not to get sort of, you end up just, it's so easy on a spreadsheet to tick another box and send it off. And then, oh my God, there's another 35 trays have arrived of this particular plant. But um, it's, it's uh, our, pr you know, our constant problem is space. <laughs> we, we have no space and uh, we're... Um, yes, you do. You have space. But however much I have space, if I could give you more space, however much I give I you... <laughs> So true. We're, all, we're all the same and we all do it. I, uh, I was sowing seed yesterday and one of the things I, I, I don't particularly like broadcasting hardy annual seeds. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all right for some sort of things like old pop marigolds and nigella, yep. love and a miss. But, but when you get delicate seedlings, mm -hmm. such as you get with um, Papava ruihas, for instance, mm -hmm. um, or, or Comutatum, you know, the ladybird puppy, I like to do what you do with your plugs and things yep. and I just sow them sow the seed over a plug tray, pot, and then put into the garden. Yeah. Um, and it's very easy when I look yesterday in the potting shed yesterday and look, I thought, when the hell am I going to be able to sow all this seed? I'm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll yeah. try a packet of that. We'll try this. We'll try that. That sounds good. I saw that recommended by, you know. And then... Yeah, yeah. Well, just whatever um, yeah. you do, Tom, don't listen to too many of these podcasts because... <laughs> <laughs> It's also what ends up happening with us. We sit here and then, oh, I must try that. And I yeah, must try yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, that's, you know, it's a healthy addiction, isn't it? Do you? Yeah. Well, exactly. It could be drugs and alcohol. I mean, yep. it maybe it's those as well. Um, <laughs> with, um, do you have any particular weaknesses either of you or abby you know for me um as everyone who watches and listens to a lot of these will know sunset shades i find it very hard to resist mm -hmm. it's amazing really that my garden isn't like 98 percent sunset shades i don't know how it isn't but i I'm, if i see a new something in that shade yeah. oh i really want to try that um i i it's so hard because I mean it's such a bit you know it's I mean, everything we, we do about you know eleven hundred odd twelve hundred different things and and most of them we're doing them because we we've got a mild addiction of those things anyway but um I think I think um I think I'm certainly of the more stronger color end of the spectrum um I'm finding that as um as I'm a, <laughs> As I mature, as I get older, um, I'm loving the stronger colours even more so. And perhaps Abby, Abby's always loved the purples and the, the blues, um, silvers. Um, and I've always, you know, I love yellow. I really love yellow. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a nurseryman said that. <laughs> well I done. I spend a lot of my time defending yellow. Um, yeah. I love this. There's a real good club of, of people doing that. You know, as we've said before, Rosie Hardy, Annie Guilfoyle, all mm -hmm. these people just like, go yellow. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's a really lovely mix. It is a really good mix. I mean, the, the, other, the other big thing for us here is that, again, you can't, you can't see it from, from here, but the nursery is, is kind of, it's almost half of the half of the area is made up of garden spaces so as you walk around again that you know that compliment i was saying before from people saying it feels like you're in a garden well that was the original idea anyway so that it's not just a, a sea of benches with plants for sale which you you need obviously a certain amount of that but it's trying to break it up and then it's also the best way you can you know it's obviously the best way to showcase what you grow because a plant will always do so much better generally speaking in the grounds than it will in a pot. So that person who picks up that plant pot of a, a particular, I don't know what it is, um, uh, thistle or, or Rebecca or, or Hellenium, if it's thriving in the border and the plant in the pot is okay, it doesn't perhaps look as good, you can say, well, let's get, get it in the ground. Yeah. And it's combinations. I mean, so often it's not even just about an individual plant, though we can adore those and we can be yeah. drawn yeah. in by catalogue close up macro shots yeah, of plants yeah. and love them but it's it's how they go together and intermingle and complement each yeah. other yeah i think so yeah 
Uh, I mean, there's, there's a nursery in Norfolk, which I haven't been to for ages, called Westacre, which mm-hmm. obviously you know well, Alan, and mm-hmm. um, and I believe you can get some very nice auriculars there as well to go back to auriculars. But there is that combination of being able to walk around and actually see the plants. And then sometimes you'll see them and go back and say, hang on a minute, I, I missed this. Do you have this for sale? So yeah, hopefully also yeah. sell a few extra things. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely, definitely. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, on a sort of one level, it's great, but as a, you know, as a business, it works well. It does work well, and people, are, you know, you can really, well, you do it. You know, I hope you do inspire people when they walk around, as and as any garden, you know, and like Alan's garden, you just walk around and be constantly dazzled by what you see. And and it's, I, I think of, I think of every, I th- as you know, in, in strictly business sense, it's like the the borders are your shop window. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Um, Though poor Alan, I've... I think you just find people say, "Have you got this?" No. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, lots, lots of plants that are either slow or difficult to propagate. I mean, I, yeah. so we try, but you know, we can't do everything. And I'm mainly propagating here on site for the garden. Yeah. Um, lots of the plants that we sell on the nursery. I mean, are divisions and cuttings that I've taken. But you know, I'm, if I if I didn't have to propagate for the garden as much as I do, I'd propagate more for the nursery. Yeah. So, so actually, I do have the luxury of having a couple of people that propagate for me. Yeah. And grow for me, so that technically they are plants from the garden. Yeah. Um, but not propagated by me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably better for that, Tom. <laughs> Uh, what do you have next, Tom, on your sh- for show and tell? Is there anything else lurking behind you? Oh, um, well, I brought. I just brought these tulips because they're. We've got tulips everywhere. <laughs> well, uh, I have been eyeing them up. We've we've not done this one before. Um, Is it Guido Schnink. Sorry. Is it Guido Schnick? Schnink. Uh, Valdiva. Ah, uh, Valdiva. Valdiva. Um, it looks heavy. It's very heavy, <laughs> but it's uh, it's magnificent. Oh. Ah. Fantastic. But, um, yeah, we we uh, we do a lot of. Uh, my drop it. Um, <laughs> we uh, we we do a lot. Of, you know, we you know our humble scale. We 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 do plant a lot of tulips in pots like this, and also in the garden areas. Um, and again, a bit. Pe- you get so, every weekend. You get loads of people saying, "Can I buy this off you? Can I get this off?" <laughs> you? I, I'm really sorry. It's you know, it's a display pot. <laughs> and sometimes you get a, you know, I think people in fact, don't understand that, you know, you, you're running a business. Why aren't you selling these things? But again, if you if you were to dismantle the whole, just, yeah, you wouldn't have something to look at. So, um, because we live on site, uh, we've always said that we the, the nursery is an, an extension of our home. It is our home. It's our sort, you know, it's our personal space. So, uh, personal. Excuse public. me, Tom. Excuse me, Tom. I'd like to buy your sofa, please. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you've not seen my sofa, Alan. You wouldn't want to. <laughs> Our eldest has a fascination at the minute with uh, making things with the glue gun. So everything's covered in uh, sort of residue of glue gun everywhere. Oh dear. <laughs> Loving it though. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so so we um, yeah every every autumn we 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 do fresh bulb planting. We don't we don't store the bulbs. We tried that eight, nine years ago, and it was a complete waste of time, um, you know, drying them, storing them, replanting. It just didn't work. So so we, we treat it, you know, the same way you might treat bedding plants. Yeah, I do too. Um, and, you know, it's a bit indulgent, but again, it works so, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a carrot to dangle in front of the local gardening population who wants to come and see something really beautiful. Yeah. And, it, and it's a good way to get, you know, if people know that there's something... You know, we don't charge people to come in here and walk around. So they, if they want to, they can just come and have a really lovely experience of seeing seeing a whole range of different plants and flowers. And and also, it's changing the display every year. So it's not like the worst. Th- the last thing you'd ever want is Mrs. Smith to come year on year and say, "Oh yes, they always have that red, you know, that red tulip there. They always have that there." I want people to go and say, "Oh, you've changed," you know, because it's. Yeah. Back to what that guy said, said to me when we first opened, so just, you know, treating every year like it's like it's your first ever. Yeah. So, and it means that you can scour the bulb catalogues and choose some. Oh yes, things. yeah, and just hemorrhage, <laughs> hemorrhage money that you should be <laughs> squirrelling away during the winter. And on the other hand, Tom, if you equate hemorrhaging the money to um, digging the bulbs up, drying them, storing oh, them, no, it's, yeah. you know, I mean, I, we we do an extensive display of tulips in pots and beds. Yeah. Um, at this time of the year, and they are spectacular. And 
every day I get two or three people say to me, what do you do with the bulbs? Yeah. Yeah. And I said, well, I put them on the compost heap, to be yeah. quite honest, because it, yeah. you know, the time it takes to do anything with them. And, you know, the second year they don't come back because they've been fed within an inch of their lives to give you the yeah, 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 yeah. first year performance, haven't they? I'll never, never... Uh... The, the utter disappointment of that of that the, all those pots of repotted bulbs that came up a, and you get like a, a a tulip bulb that was like a chive head yeah <laughs> uh, and then the thing collapses because it's so green and it's just it's like oh god you know <laughs> that's really annoying <laughs> yeah, exactly so um yeah we 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 rapidly changed our thinking on that um, obviously you're you're both very into growing from seed and long haul projects yeah. and growing yeah. plants over a long period of time. Do you grow any bulbs, any sort of tulip or spring or I whatever from seed? Have you gone down that route at all? Uh, we've, we've got a, sm- yeah. I mean, again, that's kind of more um, the weird and the wonderful collection out the back, maybe that we just do for our own, our own amusement. Um, if, 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 uh, and if they survive the sort of semi-neglect sometimes, <laughs> because obviously we have to prioritise what, you know, what makes money, the plants that we have to grow, that, that the public want. And, um, and sometimes the, the, you know, the, the, the more niche things, perhaps things that people have given you the seed, but, and we do do it, you know, um, and quite often these things can, can be a real slow burn. And, and it might be the case that, you just get asked about it one day so actually i'll just go and have a look and you might actually have it but that's not how we we can't operate on a day-to-day basis like that so we do do that yeah we do we do um um you know abby's abby's dad will present us with a half a seed tray of some weird and wonderful anemone or primula that will I say i really want to put you on the spot and see whether you can think of any of the things that are in this half neglected pile of seed right. trays Oh, but I mean, I mean, I mean, um, I mean, there's, uh, I mean, I've got some lovely batches of, you know, giant Himalayan lilies, you know, sort of cardiocrinums, which, um, which uh, are reasonably tolerant of neglect, but they, they, you've got, you have got a window, you have to get in there and, um, you know, the most magnificent plants, but um, uh, it's quite tricky, actually, because, um, I mean, there are some things that you also, I mean, a little bit like the, the viburnum that we were looking at before, and um, that betula folium, um, you sow the seed and nothing really happens for about 18 months. And it's those sort of things you have to sort of just let them be. And, uh, and one day you walk past and think, oh, you're growing. Brilliant. <laughs> so uh, I am dodging that answer, aren't I? Um, <laughs> my, 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 my brain's going to mush right now. Um, but, uh, uh, and even some like the hepaticas, we've got some really nice hepaticas oh. out the back. Um, there's a lady who has the national collection of them in a beautiful place called Silverdale, which is quite close to here. Um, and so we've got some um, very young plants of those and we've got some seed from her, um, which are slowly, slowly coming through. But again, we, you know, they're, they're more for us to eventually take and plant in the garden. And then we'll get a hundred questions from people saying, what's that? Do you sell it? No, sorry. <laughs> Can live uh, out Alan's daily experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I have been given. I've got, I've got flomo for plants, but I've got such flomo for your nursery, Tom. I just, I, I'm sure Alan as well, just itching to walk around it and to see. Well, I want, I want the experience of it. I yeah. Mean, it, it just sounds so delightful. It really does. <laughs> and I promise you, I wouldn't come in just for a stroll. Yes. I, would, I put my hand in my pocket. <laughs> uh, I'm already thinking, when can I go to Cumbria? <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly next door to Cambridge, but I'll, I'll well, definitely no, try. No, no. <laughs> um, Flomo, for anyone who's joining us for the first time, I'm sure you're familiar with the feeling, if not the term, it is that fear of missing out you get about some flower or plant. And um, I, I always have lots and lots of it. Um, actually, one of them came from our last newsletter. If you're not signed up, plug of the week, uh, you can sign up on our website. There's a link in our sort of link tree and stuff. But, um, but we did, Alan got some lovely photos of various different named wallflowers that you have at East Ruston at the moment. Mm. And I didn't realise that there was such a nursery as Ruston Gold, so named after your lovely garden. So it's I'm... Gonna, it's going to it's changed its name now because it, it's very gold and it's gone very. 
coppery orange. So it's rust and copper now. <laughs> well, I need I need some of that in my life because, as we all know, you want to grow plants that remind you of places and are associated. Well, there, there, with there's one in a pot ready for you. <laughs> Together with rust and royal as well. <laughs> Um, and but also, um, you reminded me, Tom, I think it might have even been yesterday um, in our world. By the time this goes out, maybe a week or so ago, you mm. you took us on a trip to the toilet on Twitter. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Alan, I'll have to send you this video if you didn't happen to see it. I haven't got it, so please send it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing untoward happened in the toilet. But um, you had a very pretty shade planting display yes, in your yeah, toilet, yes, yes, including yes. Podophyllum Spotty Dotty. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which to reference Jimmy Blake again, I know I think of as a real Jimmy Blake plant. Mm. But seeing you really reminded me that I, I definitely need to add that. Mm. I've got so much sort of shade in my small garden that it's just mm. calling out. for. for and I, I, I'm going to recommend that you grow it in a pot on your shady patio, patio because... I have a little secret garden here at East Rust, and I've got a couple of spotty dotties in pots, and they're far, far better than the ones in the garden. I think it's probably because we're very dry here, but mm. in the pots, in the shade, they do it exceedingly well. Yeah. They look stocking, they really do. Amazing things. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that was, a, that was a very inspiring video. Also, the toilet did seem rather cool, Tom. Oh, well, I could, I could bore you endless about the, <laughs> this toilet. Um, <laughs> you could bore us for like two minutes about the toilet. <laughs> No, it's great. It's, no, it's, I mean, I'll give it two minutes then. Um, <laughs> now when, when we took the site on, there's no main, no main sewerage anywhere. And, um, and when the, we were looking to um, have some kind of building up, which I'm sat under, net, under now, um, we needed a loo. And so um, we did some homework and discovered um, this company, there's several out there who do these waterless toilets. And I think it's a New Zealand company um, called Woohoo. Um, and uh, I was really a little bit, I wasn't too sure whether it was going to work. And um, because, you know, without going into the details, lots of people <laughs> using the loo, et cetera, et cetera, that it would smell. It doesn't smell at all. It's amazing, honestly. And um, what is phenomenal is um, how little waste there is at the end of each cycle, which is every six months. Again, I won't go into the details of that, but it fascinates me. Honestly, really, it's amazing. <laughs> That we, we this is it. something that I'm going to have to look at because I, I just can't resist the title of a woohoo. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know. um, well, I'm particularly I, amused because I'm sure this is a very niche reference, but there used there's a video game called Sims that I briefly played when I was a lot lot younger, and um, fairly certain woohoo was the Sims language for sexy time, uh, which. <laughs> Which is definitely a really weird combination with the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Probably not a very good one, really, is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a bit dubious, that. Um, but uh, but no, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's great. And, and and actually, I mean, just on a sort of, but you know, we use a lot of water here. But the fact that we've got a loo that's been here for ten years, used regularly, and it has no, you know, uses no. I think it's great. It's great, you know. And, and as is the planting in there. So thank you for the inspiration on every front. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where are you at with your Flomo, Tom? Have you got any particular plants burning at the top of your wish list? Oh, I mean, there's a, there's a plant I try. And again, this guy, I mean, you know, it's the sort of thing that Alan will probably have the, the world's most magnificent ones. But um, elef elephant ears, Colocasia. Mm. I try, I really try with these every year and um, I have mixed results. I had some really gorgeous um the black magic yeah um last year they were terrific got them nice and big and just over the winter time um they've not got through it very well i mean my greenhouse here is is pretty basic and um for whatever reason i didn't get the right mix of of um keeping them uh, dry enough or maybe there's a bit too much moisture um but frustratingly they've um there's a, sort of a, there's a couple of limp examples of them which might just about get going again. But I've always loved it as a plant. And um, when I was a student at Kew, obviously in the, in the Princess of Wales Conservatory there, they had them enormous, lovely things. And um, I, I've, always, I've, always liked the idea, I've always liked the challenge of growing things that are a bit difficult um, and you wouldn't necessarily do. In fact, I mean, 
there's a big area in the garden here which is um in fact includes some of your progeny alan of oh. my, my parents-in-law went went to your garden about nine years ago and got some canna durban for me yeah yeah and i've still got um the original bits of you know and i love it <laughs> absolutely love, and that and that set me off on a whole sort of crazy exotic thing which um which is very close to my heart and and obviously within that i want i'd love to have you know more of this collocasia but um i'm going to try keep trying we had an apprentice a few years ago lovely guy and uh, he's got one, but he brings it into his parents' sitting room and it, <laughs> lives, it lives behind the sofa during the wintertime. Um, if I did that, it would get destroyed by my children. So, <laughs> but yeah. Well, that's very much how this house operates. So there are always yeah. things. I mean, yeah. I've got a man, a hot Grahami eye in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's just how we roll. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, will, I will persevere because I love them, you know, and um, yeah. 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 Right, Alan, where are you at with your FLOMO? Well, my FLOMO this um, this week is, is a bit boring, I suppose, maybe to a lot of people, but um, I've got a, be a beautiful on bit. Uh, the reason I was looking out of the wind window earlier on, because there's a good combination out there of a self-sown a beautiful and vitifolium mm -hmm. with mauve flowers and Cleanthus punicius, the lobster claw, the red flowered Ooh. lobster claw. Mm -hmm. um, and they're looking quite lovely together. But the one thing about Abutilon is that there is a there, I think it's a butylon cross suntensi germins. Mm. That's supposed to be the one that has the darkest mauve purple flowers. Mm. Now, I've had this plant years ago, and I mean if, if I go back to the early 1980s, it was Dave Rigueur in any book to see a butylon um germins, and we have a nice underplanting of euphorbia wolfenii, and you know, there's, there's all the sort of um, trademark things and they I think that sort of came from the likes of really Rosemary Veery and Penelope Hobhouse especially when Penelope Hobhouse was living at Tinted Hull um, mm. in Somerset um, but I would like to get a beautiful on Germans again because I want to just see how the colour compares with my self-sown seedlings I mean they self-seed in the garden here all over the place and we get all shades of mauve and even white and the strange thing is about it that's that the darker the flower the smaller the flower mm. and when you get to the white ones they're much much larger and veronica tennant is a white one i think um so i'd like to get a, a beautiful and cross suntan to germans again mm. very good well this has been lovely tom maybe next time you can twist abby's arm and drag her away from the plants and the customers i can try <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to say good luck with Cordeline in Divisor, and I hope you wish me the same. Oh, and, <laughs> and I'll send you those Viber I'll send you some of those Viburnums, Alan. Well, that's very kind. And thank you very much for giving us the tip of Tulip at Valdiva, because that yeah. is a stunning, yeah. stunning. Precisely. We all want that. That is flowmotastic. <laughs> Until next time, Tom, thank you very much. Good luck with a, a fabulous you. growing season, and we will see you at some point soon. Thank you very much. Happy gardening, uh, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>